Hey y'all, it's uh, Stephen Van Camp and Lewis. Uh, it is here towards the end of January, and I am chatting today with John, uh, the plant propagator. Uh, John has his own uh, YouTube channel called the Plant Propagator, and you know I I'll let him dive into his background a little bit. But today's topic is about hydrogen peroxide with regards to plants and with re regards to orchids uh, in particular. And as uh, someone who is a, a PhD and someone who's retired um, from a lifelong career of working with plants in, a, in an academic setting, I really wanted to pick his brain about uh, about hydrogen peroxide and, and its its uses, its myths, and, and whether or not you know it, it's useful to have in a, a typical orchid collector's collection. Um, Anyway, John, I, I, I'm talking too much. Why don't you uh, go ahead and introduce yourself and, and talk a little bit about your, your your background in plants and orchids? All right, all right. Well, I'm I'm John, and I am I have a YouTube channel, uh, uh, the Plant Propagator, and I appreciate the opportunity to spend some time and and talk with you, Steve, about uh, hydrogen peroxide. I have a PhD in plant physiology. I post have did a postdoc and then spent most of my career at a major uh, U.S. institution in the Midwest United States. And, and I taught and my area of expertise was uh, plant biotechnology. Uh, I've worked uh, mostly in the laboratory. The, the core in my background is in plant tissue culture. And I retired about a year and a half ago. And in my retirement, I've started working in, in a, in a, laboratory doing a lot of flasking, actually doing mostly orchid flasking. So I do my own crosses and I bring those crosses into the laboratory and I and I generate flasks and I generate a lot of plants. I've started to learn a little bit about uh, orchid breeding and the orchid world. Uh, before my retirement, I was a soybean uh, biotechnologist. And so my contribution to the world is in the area of soybean uh, biotechnology. Um, but I have worked as a, you know, as a, a plant biotechnologist. I was a bench scientist. And I, again, in retirement, I've returned to that. And I'm, I'm a little bit familiar with uh, these various um, sterilizing agents and how they work and how to use them correctly and, and incorrectly as well. The other thing is in to, to just to bring up, um, I have served throughout most of my career on a number of different editorial boards, uh, so I've been able to review scientific journals. I can see pretty easily uh, the flaws in the studies and what people emphasize and what they should uh, re-emphasize as far as their publications go, and I was even an editor-in-chief of my society's journal for a few years, so I've seen what what people publish and what people talk about, and I think it's pretty easy for me to uh, to see through to the the core of the signal that they're trying to present. And, and yeah, and that that's that's great, and and that's you know that background is really what I I'm excited to uh, to utilize in today's discussion. Um, and in a moment, we'll talk about uh, an interesting study by Goosen and Williams that discusses the the phytotoxic effects of hydrogen peroxide on Phalaenopsis roots. And um, and it's a small study. And, and again, we'll talk about it in a sec. And I, I'm curious to hear your take on, on what they did right and, and what they could improve on maybe in, okay. in, in the future. Um, but, you know, real quick background. Uh, it seems like, I don't know, my familiarity with, with hydrogen peroxide was as a kid, you cut yourself and your mom dumps a bunch of it on you and it really stings. And, you know, supposedly it cleans out the wound. I don't know that that's quite as utilized as often anymore uh, for for humans, but then it's it's sort of somehow made its way into the orchid realm as it's often sort of billed as this uh, this cure all. It's going to cure fungus. It's going to cure snails. It's going to cure bacteria. It's going to cure rot. It's going to bring you wealth and good fortune. I I don't know. It just seems it just seems <laughs> like the the whole hydrogen peroxide thing might be a little overdone and and there are good sources of information um online uh like sue bottom at the saint augustine orchid society I, I really encourage everyone to check out her her articles that are posted in the american orchid society and then posted on the saint augustine website and one of her articles talks about hydrogen peroxide and and, and goes through uh why it can be beneficial 
um, in someone's collection. And before we jump into the Goosen article, I was just wondering if you could give us your your ideas on hydrogen peroxide with orchids and, and then maybe talk about the Sue Bottom article and, and then we can jump into that other article. Okay. Well, I mean, you're, you're right. I'm going to comment first on something you said and that it's, um, you know, it might be overdone. And the reality of it is, is if, um, you know, there, there's a lot of people um, that use certain things and whether it be hydrogen peroxide or anything and, you know, and a little of it is good for you. And they think, well, if a little of it is good for you, let's just do more and more and more. And, and, and that's, that's where the problems begin is when you, you know, when you overdo um, with certain things that are good for you, uh, you increase the concentration or doing it for too long a period of time or not, not doing other things well, uh, that's when you get into trouble. Uh, in my personal orchid collection, I do use it if I'm taking a plant uh, that and I'm, I'm dividing it. Uh, oftentimes, I will um, spray the plant with, um, and, and it's usually in the roots. And it's it's usually if there's if there if there's rotting issue in the roots, so you you remove the the dead roots and what's there. Uh, you can spray it with hydrogen peroxide, and what that does is it gives a good surface cleaning. Um, and but the thing is, the roots should be hydrated. And some people say, just leave it and it'll dry and it'll be fine. Uh, once you kind of surface clean uh, the orchid or the tissue or whatever is you're trying to disinfest, uh, then you can kind of spray it off with water a little bit. So if you have something and, and the way, again, that hydrogen peroxide works is it it's it's a you know, it, it causes free radicals to form and, and it acts by you know, destroying the, you know, nucleic acids and proteins and lipids. And, you know, too much of that at too high a concentration, you're trying to kill, you know, the fungi. Too much of it, you're going to kill your your other organisms. And so that's what you have to be concerned about, you know, is how big the organisms are, how much of it gets in and the the, the concentration and the time of exposure. So just a, for, for me, I think I, I do use it. Um, it's in my it's in my personal collection um, and I, I use it and I put it in a, a spray bottle and, you know, the foaming, everyone likes to see the foaming of the hydrogen peroxide uh, and that's fine with a limited exposure, you know, 30 seconds to a minute uh, is fine, you know, three minutes at the most with a, with a light dose, but then I rinse it off. And then if you rinse away those, the, and it, it's, it's toxic, if you rinse that away, you're good. Uh, if you leave it exposed for too long, if you apply it to some dry roots where the t where the hydrogen peroxide will be taken up, then you're asking for trouble. And, and see, see, that's uh, there's there's a few there's a few points in there that I really want to hit on, and and that's a that you that you soak the roots, so you're you're essentially protecting the roots uh, from from some of these these more harmful re free radicals and and the sort of destruction that could occur as you are. As you're sort of using it as a as a fungicide, and correct me if I'm wrong, or as a sterilization agent for for leaves, and then for where you're making the cut in the division, is that is that correct? Well, well, I actually I don't I use it mostly I use it mostly in situations where I have where it's clear browning in the roots mm -hmm. and on the you know on in the in the, in the other parts of the plant. I actually just use whenever I cut an orchid, I flame sterilize my instrument and cut it and and oftentimes when i do that it sizzles and so you're not really you know introducing more you know more pathogens into that cut uh area uh but again what again when you treat the roots um you know you 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 got to make sure the roots are initially hydrated so that you can treat and it's kind of a it's a surface cleaning is what you're trying to do the idea here is not to get it's not a systemic if, if you if you want this thing to get in the plant, if you want hydrogen peroxide to get in the plant and 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 treat it like a systemic, then you're going to kill the plant. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a surface cleaning um, method and as far as I'm concerned and what I do. Um, it's not something that you want the plant to take up. If the plant takes it up, you're going to kill the plant that's it's it's gonna do do the job there so you got to be a little careful about that and again they can take it up minimally but you don't want you don't want to for example dry roots on on you know 
it, it, you want to have your roots already pre-moistened and have already have water in the velum and have, have them absorbed. And I think you can you can easily identify that before you apply um, the the hydrogen peroxide for a surface cleaning effect. And 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 let's that's I think that's a good segue into the, the next thing that a lot of folks use this for is and that's to kill bush nails. Um, there's there's a lot of discussion online, and, um, including in Sue Bottoms' article, where uh, there there is the thought that it's going to kill both the eggs and and the adults. Is if you were to soak the roots and then you apply this, do you, do you think that would still occur, or what are your thoughts on that? So, so if you're going to, so I've never done that. We don't have any snail issues where I am, but the, the main thing that you've, you've got to do is, you know, if you're going to soak the roots in hydrogen peroxide, make sure that they're already, they're pre-moistened. Uh, what happens when you have, you know, orchid roots, they're, they're immediately, I just, I just fertilized my, my plants today and, and the vandas where the roots are hanging, you know, you, you, you spray them, you put water on them and you can immediately see that they take up the water and then it takes them a while to go from the green to the, to the, to the clear or to the, to the white. And so you've got to, if you make sure that they take up the water in, you know, in the vellum at first, if you make sure that they're already saturated, then it's, then I think it'd probably be better to do it to, to then apply hydrogen peroxide as, as a soak. Um, but again, you have to be, I don't know how long Sue is recommending for soaking, but um, it, it's, you know, it's going to take a while, um, I would think, to, to have an effect on the snails. The, you know, a lot of times, so I, I looked at um, the amount of time it takes hydrogen peroxide to kill certain organisms. Um, so, you know, bacteria, three minutes, um, fungi, five minutes, um, spores that tend to be a little tougher, uh, six hours. So oh. it depends. I don't know how, well, that's spores. That's, that's, those are tough. Yeah. Um, but, you know, so it depends on how big the organism is that you're trying to kill the eggs. Maybe you can kill them a little more clearly. Maybe snails are a little more more sensitive. I know, but typically the bigger organisms, it's going to take longer to have an effect. Hey, if you found this video helpful, please uh, click this little button down here on the bottom right. And uh, don't feel obligated to, but if you feel like this was worth a dollar or two, please uh, please click that and add a dollar or two. Um, that will really go a long way to me helping to get a greenhouse right over here, as well as head over to Brazil for an orchid trip in 2024. So all of your orchid donations will go to orchid causes uh, for which I can make additional videos. As always, thank you very much. I'd love to chat about the Goosen and Williams article. And, and, and basically what they did is they took a bunch of Phalaenopsis they tested uh, three, six, and twelve percent um, hydrogen peroxide, and they did they did root dips and it, oh and zero percent of course I, I guess, um, and they found that there was phytotoxic effects to the roots at all levels of hydrogen peroxide, but uh, which was especially noticeable in the six and twelve percent, and then they they had. They said that there were minor setbacks at the 3%. And of course, 3% is what we typically buy from the store um, when we're, we're getting hydrogen peroxide. So uh, I'm, I'm curious to hear what you think. Like I said, what, what did they do right? What could they improve on? What, what should a follow-up study look at? And, and uh, what, what's your general opinion of, of this article? All right. So you look, I look at this article. So you take a good look at it. Uh, the authors are both at um, Kansas State University, which is a good uh, research institution in the United States. Uh, the journal that they published in is, it's not good, but it's not get, not bad. It has an impact factor of, of one. The, you know, with, when you take a look at, at what I do, it's kind of funny what I do. Um, what I've done over my whole career is I go to the I go to the images. I don't go to the graphs first. I go to the images in the paper, and in the images in the paper, um, they show you what their Phalaenopsis plants look like, and more importantly, they show you what the roots look like. And so, if you take a look at the roots, the, the Phalaenopsis roots, <clears throat> excuse me, that are that are growing, that are part of their study, 
And even in their control treatment, their, their treatment that didn't receive, you know, any peroxide treatment, those roots don't look very good. They just don't. And so you kind of, you look at that and that's very telling when the roots and the control treatment are all shriveled up. You know, phalaenopsis roots, as you know, they can be rare, they can be really lush and green and, and thick. And, and these don't look like that. You look at the, where they got the plants from and they got the plants. I got to go to early on uh, in the article. They, and it was interesting. They even told, they even wrote um, in the article when these orchids were shipped to them. So they're failing. They're pretty large size Phalaenopsis orchids shipped um, and, and they're at Kansas. So they were shipped from Green Circle Growers. It was shipped from uh, this place in there in Oberlin, Ohio. Mm -hmm. They were shipped to Manhattan, Kansas, which is where Kansas State University is in January. Mm -hmm. And you and I can't tell um, how cold it is in Ohio right now because it's January. Uh, you know, I'm in, I'm in Florida. You're, you're also in the in the south <laughs> beautiful day yeah and but but it's right now in ohio uh where they're located it's uh they're have they're in the middle of a of a blizzard it is it's not that cold it's only 30 degrees but it's snowing so you don't know if the plants were were stressed a little bit and, and okay if they weren't um these are fairly large plants and the control plants look like they were and, and they talk about how they were treated they were they were held for i think three weeks fertilized once. There's no information on how they were watered, but I, I don't know whether the authors on these on this paper um, were orchid people. So it doesn't look like these plants were watered well. And then what they did is they soaked the plants in 3%, 6%, and then higher concentrations of the peroxide, as you said, but it may have been that they were using, they, they, they soaked the plant. So they dipped the whole plant as people tend to do in these solutions for, I think, five minutes. I'm not sure. I don't remember how long. So they did a long dip. It doesn't say whether they rinsed it afterwards. It didn't say if they watered it before. So what they, and, and you're going to see effects. And they only looked, you know, they, this experiment is, it, it only went a short term. Orchids respond, they're slow growing. So the response is going to take a little bit longer. And, and most plant scientists are used to seeing immediate results. So they didn't actually even do a long-term study for orchids. If it would have been soybean, what I worked with, it would have been a long-term study because they, you know, they grow up in one season and then they're, they're done and orchids live for, as you know, years and years. So it was a short-term study. Um, they don't, you know, the, the, the plants needed to be water pre-watered to kind of swell the roots. And what they did is they used, um, you know, a, a higher concentration of the hydrogen peroxide and the roots look dry. So I would assume that the peroxide was taken up into the plant and they, they had they had issues as a result of that. From looking at some of the other images, they show a cross section of roots of the damaged and the non-damaged plants. And some of the parts from my background in anatomy, some of the parts on that image are mislabeled. That's not a good sign. You look for you look for things that where there's some inconsistency, where there may have been a little carelessness. And I think I think we're we're suffering from uh, maybe a lack of orchid knowledge from these um, you know from these scientists. And, and also maybe not as much care in how the experiment was, you know, was set up. The core of the experiment, you look at it really on a very, um, very low level, and it seems to have been on all, not, it seems to be okay. But if you really dissect, if you really look deep into what they did, there's some real issues, especially if you know orchids on how this thing was set up and how they evaluated it. It, it seems like the the nail in the coffin for six and twelve percent was was pretty obvious, but maybe they maybe they need to go back and really focus on that three percent and and tighten up their controls, tighten up their techniques, get someone who actually knows something about orchids. Um, right. Maybe not ship in January. Um, you know, do it for a longer period. I don't know if these were undergrads or graduate students that were on kind of a, a time frame or, or what, but it seems like it, they're. they're there's a thing they could do better next time that the evidence so far is is murky um but 
potentially useful, do you think, for a hobbyist? Well, I, I think um, I, th I think you you got to be a, a you know you have to not use the higher concentrations of uh, peroxide, or if you do, um, use a small amount of it and make sure it's it's diluted. And that's not mentioned, you know, in the article at all. The article is pretty. <laughs> to look, from just reading the article, you're not gonna you're not gonna learn a whole lot. All right, John. What uh. What, what sort of take homes do you have generally, in your opinion, about about the the article, maybe Sue Bottom article, hydrogen peroxide in general? Uh, what are your thoughts? Well, I, I think that within when you're looking about looking at uh, these various agents, whether it be uh, hydrogen peroxide, um, you know, fertilizers, you know, everything, it's you have to. You have to be careful and use them and, and try things and then use them at the recommended dosage dosage. You can overdo, you know, as you know, a little fertilizer is fine too much. You'll kill your plants. And we've seen the same thing with the peroxide. So, so just be, you know, just be cautious. Um, everything in moderation is OK. Um, you know, become your own scientist and evaluate these things for yourself and be wary of the negative effects on plant growth and root growth as you're moving forward we you know i think you should know what you're looking for and just you know just be aware of that and you know cautiously move forward as a scientist and see how it goes yeah i think i think that makes a lot of sense and if you're trying to if you're trying to treat something know what you're treating first of all and then try and mm -hmm. treat that thing rather than sort of a broad spectrum i really appreciate your insight and i think i think it's really valuable to have someone uh like yourself just talking about it and giving us some of the nuances of, of what's out there and you know maybe maybe helping to moderate my tone uh and I, before we started recording I, I mentioned that you know i had used hydrogen peroxide on some of my plants and they died so i'm just like forget hydrogen peroxide. I'm going to go out and make sure nobody else uses it, but maybe, maybe that's not the correct approach either. All right. Well, I appreciate you chatting with us and, uh, um, uh, I will continue watching your channel. I, I watch it all the time and, um, you know, we should, uh, we, we can chat again in the future sometime. All right. And I appreciate the opportunity to, to talk on your channel. I haven't, this is my first, just so you know, it's my first, uh, interaction with another YouTuber at this level. And I really appreciate it. It was good meeting you when you came to, to Florida and I appreciate the follow-up. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate it. We'll, we'll talk soon. Okay. All right. See you.